welcome to the MBS True Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norma Sanzo. Joining me today is linebacker for the Quills, Silver Quill. 42, 73, hi! <laughs> hi, hi, hi! And also joining us today is the cheerleader for the Quills, Sapphire Heart Songs. Wait, we're not playing baseball? Oh well. <laughs> go, go, team, or whatever cheerleader reference here! Yay! Call me, beat me! Go, go, no. Power Rangers! Oh, no way no, you get no. that reference. Oh, God. No, I feel like... I, I get the reference, Norman, but my God, no. <laughs> uh, but hey. I, I love and enjoy the possible, but no, I'm that person who just can't be cheerleading. No. <laughs> uh, but hey, <anywho, laughs> in today's episode, we're going to review Season 6, Episode 18, Buckball Season. Yay! Sports! <laughs> Woo! I have no physical prowess. <laughs> In this episode, Applejack and Rainbow Dash trains Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie for the upcoming Buckball game against Appaloosa. Yeehaw! Buckball, this is new. <laughs> uh, before we officially start with the review, I would like to say that, welcome back Silver, you just came from Nightmare Nights, and I bet you had an awesome adventure, right? I had many awesome adventures. This was uh, the first time I've really been a community guest, and that was a, a stunning and humbling experience. From my perspective, they ran a very tight ship. They they kept things moving, and we had a bit of an adventure, to be sure. This was this was a frightening adventure that led to a very happy adventure. Same so, like that review that you did. What was it called? Scare Master? Ah, uh, it's a Scare Master. More on, more on that in due course. Uh... But let's see, how how to set the stage for this. On Dr. Wolf's channel, there are some videos where we acted out our Team Fortress 2 shenanigans. And, uh, yes, I, I, I got to wield lightning blows as an actual weapon of cuteness. <laughs> I'd like to see that in real life. Well, it's in the video. You can. Kind of. Kind of. Yay! Go but, on, though. Yes. Uh, while what you don't know is that while we were recording these, a group of friends I'd made the previous year, a quartet, were just watching watching the silliness unfold. And after I'd recorded a skit, they called me over and they chased off one of their party, a uh, young woman, and uh, they said, down. And I said, what? D- yeah, down. They go, they're whispering all conspiratorial, like, <laughs> down. So I start to crouch a little. I was like, this, this is very awkward. I don't like where this is going. And like, no, look down. And they're like, no, look down. And one of them is holding a wedding ring. Now, I should have said, ooh, I'm flattered, but I, we just met. <laughs> but no, no. The friend that they chased off, this fellow was going to propose to her. And they asked if, they asked if I could, uh, help with the proposal because they like to have, you know, an audience. So I say, sure, we're, we're going to do a reviewer Q and A the next day. And that would be the point where I sort of had the most control over the flow of events. Uh, now, before we jump to that event, we had a scare later. Ooh. Another member of this quartet collapsed at clutching his side. And he was apparently he is prone to having these attacks, especially when he is low on sleep, high on caffeine, and uh. has not eaten properly. All of which occurred during this during this convention. So if I can beg anyone anything, please take care of your body. You know, they call it the, the six to one. Six hours of sleep, two meals a day, one shower, yep. at least. That, that is a strong rule I abide by because nobody likes to smell body odor and food is good. Now, to the con staff's credit, I found uh, a guy who goes by the name of Leatherneck Brony. He was a member of the security team. And he, former Marine, when he found heard there was a medical emergency, he was off like a shot. And he got, uh, I believe it's an EMT to come in and, and late, I saw the dude later that night. He was in a full, uh, cosplay and he was doing fine, which I was very relieved. I had to leave shortly thereafter to uh, attend an event. And on the way, I bumped into my friend Leon, who continued his trend of cultural appropriation by bringing these delicious Dutch waffle treats. And he and another guy noted I looked like I needed a drink. And yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty shaken. I was like, oh, this is, that was scary. Well, I have a Dutch waffle. You know what? Sugar's the next best thing to liquor. So, 
um num dum and it was delicious. So the next day comes along, and the quartet is back together. They're all in good health, for which I was greatly relieved. And during the reviewer Q&A, the question came up, who's your favorite villain? And as the reviewers were going down the line, I reserved the right to go last, because my favorite villain is Queen Chrysalis. And lo and behold, the the boyfriend, soon-to-be fiancé, is dressed up as a changeling. His girlfriend is dressed up as Princess Celestia. Oh, God. And so, and so while being totally honest about my favorite villain, I noted that we had a changeling in the audience. And I called him up, and I said, you know, changelings feed on love. Is there anyone in the audience you'd like to, uh, who's offered a lot of love? <laughs> and, he call, and he calls up his lady. And so there we go. The stage is set. He proposes to her. A, a dude in the audience who was dressed up as a Wonderbolt, but with a saxophone, and he could play. Uh-huh. This was not a prop. This dude could play. Well, everyone's applauding. He plays Here Comes the Bride on his saxophone. <laughs> and the and the, the now fi- fiancé is so overwhelmed, she sits right down on the floor. Uh, I, she did not faint, but the proposal floored her. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and it was a, a wonderful, wonderful moment. But taking into account the scare of their friend having that attack is like, it just sort of made the proposal all the sweeter happiness for the moments that are. And, you know, the scary stuff helps us appreciate the beauty. That was a wonderful uh, experience and a true highlight of the convention. Uh, Aww. That is awesome. Now that is when I know full context. Here's one other story. That's much shorter <laughs> because I don't know what the frig was going on. <laughs> Well, at a, a meet and greet with sponsors and vendors and, and other attendees, I got to see M.A. Larson sneaking out the door with a cone-shaped paper cup of sour cream and a Blu-ray in one hand. And he just slipped out the back, and I looked down at the drink I had and thought, I've either had too much or not enough. <laughs> Ah, with M.A. Larson, anything goes. By the way, buy his book, Penny Royal Academy, available on Amazon. Uh, yes, so uh, the sour cream I at least know was from the bar, and I think he mistook it for a different, like some sort of dessert. So I, sh- I imagine that was a rude surprise. But I just like, what? What am I looking at? What is going on? Uh, you should have tweeted him and asked. <laughs> I'm an old fogey in this regard. Twitter... And snaps, uh, selfies and snapshots, it all seems like an invasion of privacy in some ways, airing people. I mean, here I am, I'm telling about this, but only because I lack the context, so it seems funny. I, I just don't know, but it's like, hmm, that's a site I did not expect to see at this convention. Well, at any con, strange things happen. <laughs> you ain't kidding. Yeah, not just Whistling Dixie. But I had a ton of fun at this convention. It was wonderful to see people, wonderful to connect. Plenty of other odd and wonderful stories to be told. It sounds like you had a really awesome time there. I did. It was. It was very, very good. Oh, by the way, um, did you meet one of the con Sandy? Sandy. Chef Sandy. Josh. Not Josh. Um, I forgot. Actually, yes. I think I did. I think I did meet Sandy. Huh. The unfortunate part is that sometimes there's just so many people I start I start to get confused. Have I met this person? Have I met that person? There were a lot of really awesome people working the con. Oh, true that, true that. But he's um one of the con chairs, and he he was the host for I think he still is the host for Brony Time, a uh, Brony podcast done early on in the fandom, but on hiatus. So I owe my show to them because they inspired me to jump ship and do this thing. Excellent. Wish I could just say it to him and talk about it. But hey, it's one of those things where there's the internet for. Anyway, um, we come back to reviewing. And thank you for story, Silver. Yeah, I thought we were supposed to be reviewing an episode. Hey, Silver has <laughs> we are, stories. We are reviewing my life experience. Yeah. We are reviewing my life. <laughs> Silver well, Quill, this is your life. I'm just listening. I'm not going to review, man. If we review, oh my god, the critics. <laughs> Uh, cr- critics. Indeed. But... I, I came here to play a game of buckball, which is sadly not baseball, as the Indians probably won the World Series or not. 
Uh, Second place ain't that bad either, though. Uh, I have come to play buckball and kick ass. And I'm all out of buckball. <laughs> but anywho... Are you still going to kick someone's ass? Yes, that's kind of... Wow, wow, you killed it. Yep. You, just, you killed the... the yeah. The spirit of Rowdy Rowdy Piper. though. Yeah. But anyway. The spirit of Rowdy Rowdy Piper is mad at you now. Yep. Uh, is he dead? Yes, sadly he passed away. Aww. But anywho. Uh, let's get back on to reviewing because, well, awesome story, Silver, but we want to review this because this is a fun episode. Uh oh, I've been cool story broad. <laughs> nah, because I think you have more? I do. Yes, we'll save that for next review. We can start a whole new series. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, we start off with this one. And first impressions are in order. Um, I went silver first. Now, Seppi, you start first. This episode actually pleasantly surprised me because I was um thinking that this episode was going to be just a plain, boring filler episode as a lot of MLP episodes were. Like, in some regard. But no, this this episode pleasantly surprised me in a lot of ways. Like, I enjoyed this episode way more than I should have. I'm not sure I understand what that means. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a boring episode like Applejack's Day Off or something of that sort. But no, it really wasn't. It was pleasant. It was funny. Zen snails for the win. I swear to God. I just really enjoyed this episode. Alrighty then. And Silver, what about you, bro? I will say this one was kind of a letdown for me. I I didn't I don't think I had as much fun as Zasefi. Oh. Which is which is fine. I mean it wasn't bad, but at the same time you just sorta you see Applejack and Rainbow Dash just sort of self destructing on this and you start to think, Oh, come on ladies, you're smarter than this. I know you're smarter than this. Be smarter than this. Why are you not being no, smarter I than this? Me. I forgot they existed. <laughs> wow. You're free. Wow, that wow, that's that's a bit I forgot bit... they existed in this episode, or at least I haven't like caught I haven't been caught up on the episode, like I haven't like rewatched it, but I remembered having fun with it. <laughs> Alright. Well well there you go. There's that might still be damning when you forget the two lead well, they're not the lead characters, but they're the primary actors. But I agree with Safi, Zen Snails. They finally found a way to make him, he's still rather dumb, but he's, he's entertainingly dumb. Yep. It's his strength now. <laughs> uh, and he had, he, he had the best lines in the whole, in the whole show. And what is that line? Take your pick. <laughs> you know what I do? Not think about it? Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yep. I'm st- I'm still free to play buckball if you just so you know. <laughs> yep. Uh he has good lines in this one. Snails did a a wonderful job. Uh Fluttershy had the best breakdown. I mean, this was the epic breakdown for which all other breakdowns will be compared. Because being in the you zone also sounds forgot like that Pinky had the best moves. Well, when you can play upside down, that's pretty that's pretty impressive. However, no, I'm talking the, about like the uh, dance moves. Did she do dance? I don't remember dance moves. My memory is failing me there. But all in all, the thing that soured it at the end for me was Rainbow Dash's rather graceless victory. A victory she herself did not even earn. So it was mostly a forgettable episode in my eyes. Really? No. Huh. So we'll talk about it in depth. Okay. And as for me, I like this episode. I say that a lot, and well, it's true. I do enjoy most of the episodes here. With this one, let's see, they have a, they invented a new sport that works for this universe, and at least we get a general idea on what buckball is. But still, there's still the hoofball. So this could be an allegory for basketball, probably. I don't know. And what else do we have here? Like. We have Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie being awesome. We have Applejack and Rainbow Dash, um, well, getting a taste of their own medicine and being schooled by Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. And on a meta level here, it's just Ashley Ball and Andrea Lipman acting together. So that is 
cool on my end. The way I look at this. Ashley Ball picks on Andrew Liebman. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, true, true that, true that. And, well, what can I say? This is a very fun episode. Um, Silver has his problems, but personally for me, I don't see those problems. I find them rather entertaining. And the whole scenario of working best under pressure, it doesn't work for some people. And this episode highlights it well. But anywho, we've gone long, and let's jump into the episode. If you haven't seen it, please do. And there's be spoilers, so you have been warned. Anywho, we start off the episode with Applejack looking at a tree, thinking about stuff. What stuff is she thinking? Checking out the winds and whatnot, and well, doing the $6 million man kick until Rainbow Dash interrupts her. And... With a brief explanation, she's practicing buckball because she has a game with Appaloosa. And with any sports, Rainbow Dash is hype and wants to help. And the most important question, what is buckball? The question that is on everyone's mind. True. Or as as some, as I've heard it also described, Pony Quidditch. Uh, true that too. You could You could say that too. Pony Quidditch. <laughs> Uh, but still, it's... Pittage? Quidditch? Quidditch. Yeah, Pony Quidditch. Pittage. Pittage. Uh, Quidditch. I've, gi- I've given it a new name. You will all abide by it or taste my wrath. Uh, no. I'm going to rebel against you because, nah. We shall see. But anywho... Yeah. Um, should we explain what Quidditch is? Uh, should we explain what buckball <laughs> is? <laughs> or should we... No, not- now that you now that you're saying it's Quidditch, now I know I've corrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. But I think we saved that for that scene. But anyway, um after intros, um Rainbow Dash gathers Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy to well, she just needs extra help to play the game and just demonstrate how it works. And they need to find a unicorn teammate. And well, to find unicorn teammate they hold trials. Actually, I want to uh, I want to just raise a unique complaint with this. What would you do if a pony was a unicorn but wanted to kick the ball? That is true. Hmm. Huh. What What would you do if an Earth pony wanted to be the goaltender? This is a game that actually forces you into a role based on your birth, which, to my eyes, is actually kind of terrifying. Um, not really in terms of. Sp- Sports like you this. wouldn't even be able to play silver according to this game. Unless exactly. You... Well, actually, it's you could, considering you can fly. Yeah, he'll be the keeper. It's an... it's anti beakist I tell you. <laughs> what if I don't want to be the keeper? What if what if my joy comes from the physical activity of kicking people in the face? I make no comment. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you do have a point there, silver. You do have a strong point because. What if some pony wants to play as the goalie and wants to play as the defender or the striker or whatever it is? Because from what we see here, each um, clan has their own specific role. Like oh, clan? Clan? What? Oh, what no, is... you've gone and done it. Well, you want to say race? I want to say that speciesist. Speciesist. <laughs> Oh, uh, wow. Alright, each species has their role in this game. Honestly, I don't know how to respond to this deep, um, small complaint. It is, it's a small complaint, but it is a few flavor they guessed it. Yeah, true, because, well, it's one of the situations where what happens if Time Turner wants to play as the keeper? Exactly. See, this is where, and for the record, we've seen the doctor play soccer. Mm-hmm. But in all honesty, I would think that for the goalie, they'll put on a harness for him or her to run around and catch it. That could work. For the kicker, well, any pony could do it as long as they abide by the rules. But for the defender, that's one thing where if this game is only done up high, you need a flyer. So either a Pegasi, Griffin, or Alicorn can play that role. Oh, oh, I see how it is. It's, this is just another way to keep the Earth Ponies down, man. It's, it's true. 
I thought better of you, Norman. What? How could you? I see the truth. Especially considering since you're an Earth pony. Which is... <laughs> Norman, rise up. Take your rightful place. Don't let anyone decide your future for you. And other <laughs> inspirational commentary. Oh, uh, wow. Although, Silver, I'm slightly curious. If you were a pony, what species would you end up as? You know what? I'm going to say I would be an Earth pony just because I've grown tired of this unicorn master race baloney. Thank I'd you. Ra- I'd raise all kinds of hell just to just to shake up the establishment, man. <laughs> uh... Power to the ponies. Silver Quill, on the highway to hell. Let's just say I'm going to bring Equestria down to Earth. Oh, hi uh, But anyway, we have the tryouts. And, well, here's where the game is explained. So you have... Oh, wow. Does anybody here know how to explain this better than I? I think so. Basically, the kickers in the center of the field very much kick the ball towards the net, which it, towards their own goal which is on the opposite side of the field, hosted by a teammate. The other team will do their very best to intercept the ball with the the ball with the defender and send it back towards your goal, uh, well, rather their goal, on the opposing side of the field. Then it's up to a defender who is who can fly to basically bat the ball away and get it back to the kicker, who is the only one who can score a point. And that's pretty much the long and the short of it. Thank you so much, Silver, because. That was well explained. I couldn't have done better. I don't think I can. Done, I don't think I can do better. I still flubbed, but it's a simple game. But it's all very much determined by what you can do: magic, flight, or kicking. Mm-hmm. And well, in all honesty, this is a much friendlier game than Boofy Ball. <laughs> well, okay, Boofy Ball involves hitting small animals, which is just what. What? No, not really, because the animal itself likes it. Like, it enjoys the kicking, so I think it's meant for it. I don't know. That's a pretty masochistic animal, then. Not to mention, I think you're just using classic excuses. Norman, the rhetoric I'm hearing from you because tells you. <laughs> oh, yeah, it totally likes it. It's totally fine with it. Because you look at the comic, it says that... Socrates would be proud, maybe. Oh, Norman, God. I'm just I'm I'm learning the whole dark side of the NBS show today. Oh no, uh... Silver, Silver, would you like your PETA sign? <laughs> PETA, nothing. I, I'm more of a. I'm gonna go with the foo sign. <laughs> F you, everybody. <laughs> oh well, but anywho, <laughs> after they explain how the rules are, we have our tryout. So every well, I won't say every unicorn comes to play. In all honesty. I would have thought that they invited Twilight to try out. Let's assume she was doing something importantly princessy that would have totally won the fans over this Alicorn thing, and they didn't show it because reasons. Yeah, or Rarity, because think about it, because if you have Rarity and Twilight, they're the main six, it will be perfect. But no, they decided not to because, well, fashion, 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 princess, 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 working. With Rarity, I understand because, honestly, she would be like, oh, you want me to get all sweaty. And run around a lot. Yeah, oh, thank you, darlings. Yeah. Well, she can't be any worse than that one pony who was doing her makeup instead of trying to catch yeah. the friggin' ball. Yeah. Oh, well. Although that raises a question, since that pony is such a fashion slave. We haven't really seen a lot of artwork for the ponies that kind of debuted in this episode. That's because a lot of them are sort of despised for being quote-unquote incompetent. That and also, they're not memorable. It's just sort of funny. I, when this fandom was just getting going, people jumped on new background ponies to weave stories. If you think about it, right, the character that they latch on to is the unique kind of characters. Like, okay, probably the makeup pony would have a story on her own, but in this day and age, she's not memorable enough. But in the previous years, we have Lyra and Bonbon. Bon. They're memorable because, well, Lyra set in a very strange position, and Bonbon bon was just there next to her. And now they're best friends. Quote-unquote best friends. And with uh, who now? Uh, Derpy? The Muffin Pony? Well, she's memorable because of that one eye glitch or eye error. So she's stuck that way, and the fans eat it up and enjoy her a lot. And the fans do cheer. Yay! So... Now to have well, I do think that we have one of the um, 
quote unquote Derpy's um, daughter, the first trial pony with the dolphins. Remember her? Derpy's daughter. Oh, uh, I forget yeah, her name. She's not as I forget what the fans popular call her. Ditsy. No, not Ditsy. What was it? Um, there's Dinky. Dink, yeah. Dinky. Hoops. That's not Dinky. It's her. This is her older sister, quote unquote older sister. Oh goodness! So that just now it's all just getting yeah because the fandom <laughs> the fandom say that this is a sister because of the sister who's social. Remember that one scene? These two uh, are together. Yeah. yeah, honestly, all that really means to me is that uh, Dinky is not Derpy's daughter. Uh, true, but fandom wants to say something. I don't know. They wrote good fan fiction. I'm just gonna roll with it. So anywho, um. As tryouts goes on, we see a lot of failed unicorns doing their job. And, well, surprisingly enough, Applejack and Rainbow Dash doesn't seem to be getting a lot of goals or getting... They Let's just say that they're doing worse. Pinkie Pie and Slattershy are doing excellently well with Slattershy's extremely long defensive tail and Pinkie Pie's breaking the fourth wall kind of deal. And, well, Pinkie Pie goofs and Ball almost hits Snails, which in a feat of, with a feat of awesomeness, Snails catches all the balls without breaking a sweat. Or being terrified that they're throwing stuff. Even gets to lecture them. You should be more careful. <laughs> I like pie. <laughs> in all honesty, why is he carrying a bucket of water? Well, apparently he, he was supposed to deliver it, although now that you've gotten Balls in the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are so immature. <laughs> I guess I guess he kind of failed in that regard. Um, is Sapphire still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I just really haven't had anything to say. I've but, I've been sort of like lost ever since um the uh, Silver Sora mentioned like oh there weren't enough there wasn't enough fan art for this episode. Then I went back to Canterlot Boutique where they didn't have enough. Friggin' Pepper Step or Ghost Pepper or whatever her name is fan art. All, all I'm saying is a fandom that once seized on background characters has mellowed out a little. We're no longer pushing for the imagination, but part of that is because we've gotten better supporting characters. Case in point, Snails, a character who I really didn't enjoy, but I know what he's, he's, he is what he's supposed to be, a flippant idiot. Except now it's his strength. But at the same time, too, he wasn't really memorable because he was o- he was always overshadowed by Snips. Was he? I never got well, that feeling. I, I don't know why, but I feel that way because um, Lee Tokar plays Snips. And to me, it's always Lee Tokar, Snips, is always being in the spotlight of things. And um, with Snails, I couldn't even remember the voice actor's name. I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see. Uh, I shall... Um, I shall correct that mistake by looking at who he is. Snail's voice actor is... Oh! Oh, Snail's voice actor is uh, Ian Richard... Richard Ian Cox. I, I remember because he actually plays Inuyasha in the English dub. And if dub. I'm not mistaken, he's Vegeta, right? Was it Goku? I, I don't remember. All I remember is that Richard Ian Cox, or I forget his name, played Inuyasha. I'm not even kidding. A friggin' half-blood demon plays snails. I can believe that. It might explain his freaky powers of of zen-like ball catching. Also, Silver, considering you grew up in this era, I will kill you if you have no idea what Inuyasha is. Oh, this or era. Or I'll give you the same level of shame as you give me. This era. Really? This era? <laughs> yes. Uh... Yes, I... I, I will rep- send you to the feudal era if you don't know what Inuyasha is. Well, that's just a feudal effort in my eyes. But, uh, yes, I do know what Flippin' Inuyasha is. It's the romance story that went nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, it did in the final act. But there, was there a final act? I, okay, technically I know there Actually, was. Actually, there was. Act. There was an ending to Inuyasha. Which took him long enough after Kagome and Inuyasha basically proved they were the ultimate dysfunctional couple <laughs> ten times I think over. I was Ranma, by comparison, moved at whiplash pace compared to Kagome and Inuyasha. Ironically done by the same uh, artist. Actually, I have the manga in my room. Let me... 
I, nah, yep. never mind. I don't know we're, we're, we're derailing. But anywho, Richard Ian Cox, he plays Goku, by the way. Yeah, so that's cool. Also, to show how completely immature I am, <laughs> Cox. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, but anywho, um, with his amazing talents of catching balls in basket, <laughs> catching balls in <laughs> basket, uh, plus, oh, Rainbow Dash and Applejack asked if he could do that with, well, um, with the bigger basket, and he proves it by doing so, and yay, we got the goalie for the team. Yay. Yeah. And, so, and so Ray Rainbow and Applejack are all like, You guys are really good at handling the balls. <laughs> so we'd like you to handle the balls for us. <laughs> oh, God. So Silver, is your name Beavis or Butthead? <laughs> oh god. But anywho, uh so here's something I really appreciate and find it smart on Applejack's and Rainbow Dash's part because they know they have their took us kick by Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. So for the greater good of the team, they decide to hand that responsibility to Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie to lead the team. So your team members are Fluttershy, Pinkie Pie, and Snails. So, yay! That's awesome. The greater good. Mm-hmm. And I do appreciate this because they decided to put their pride aside just to get the win for the team. It's all about the wins, baby. Mm-hmm. Them being confused, Pinkie Pie and Fletcher's High asked why, because I thought you guys were really excited for this. And they explained that you guys are better than us. You kick our patukas and we want to win. So the whole team is dependent on you. And we... No pressure. <laughs> yep, no pressure. So practice. And well... <sighs> It seems that their way of doing things does not match how Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie works because getting under pressure is something that they don't work well under. Which is kind of surprising. I imagine Pinkie has to deal with a lot of pressure with parties, but but she sort of lives in the moment, Mm -hmm. so I don't think she really stops to think about what this pressure might entail. Yeah, and I also think that that's done under her own terms. But, yeah, this is not a fun sport for them at once the serious competition. Now, Rainbow, good Lord, Rain- Rainbow putting Fluttershy through the paces. That's just craziness abounds. Yeah, but true. I mean, here's something where I feel like I've been here before. Like, I've experienced this in my life, but I don't really 100% remember where from. Probably a card game competition, probably... Or some kind of competition that I participated in. And. Were there, were there motorcycles involved? Oh my god. And card games? That. On motorcycles? That jet guy is such a jerk. Hey, hey, Sapphire. Card games on motorcycles. Card games on motorcycles! Oh, get your game on. But anywho, with them being under pressure, and yeah, working under pressure is something that some people thrive on and some people buckle under its pressure and fall and just break down, cry in the fetal position, rocking back and forth. Uh, let's see here. So I feel a song coming on. Pressure coming down on me, coming down on you. That's all. Yeah. But anywho, um, with Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie here, they buckle under the pressure and... They are not having fun. So they think about, okay, never mind. Um, since nobody really knows what buckball is, um, it's not going to be serious. Like Nobody's going to uh, have high hopes for us. Like, it's, it's nothing. And suddenly, the whole town rallies and says good luck. And oh my god. Uh, sp- Actually, th- this is kind of funny. Uh, the more a commentary on sports culture, really. We've never heard of this sport. We have no investment in it, but we're going to make a big deal out of it because you're competing against another town. And this is somewhat in the spirit in line with the friendship games. No matter what grievances your community has to get within itself, all of that seems to vanish whenever you introduce the other team, <laughs> the the bad guys, the the team that's trying to deny you the victory 
your town is meant to win, even though only three members of your town are actually playing. Yep. Doesn't that apply to all sports, quote unquote, oh, show yes. and anime? Oh, yes. So, sports is tribal mentality. Probably at its purest. <laughs> okay, that's a funny pun on my part. What? <laughs> what was your pun? The Cleveland Indians, we call it the tribe. Oh, uh, uh, well. Tribal well, tribe offer. <laughs> yeah, but still, I, I do agree with you on that one because, um, there's a basketball anime that I'm, I've watched called Kurono Basket. It's basically this one character. That, long story short, they play basketball and they were facing an American team and this Japanese kids, they're from separate schools, but they were the best in juniors, junior high. And when they went to senior high, they split into different schools and they got challenged by, well, an American team saying that they're the best and bring on your best, uh, whatever sports crew people. And all of them f- from different schools says, oh, they want the best. We'll give them the best. The group get back together and played. I haven't seen that episode yet, but from what I heard, it was magical. Oh, is it a magical girls sports movie? Nah, it's all about boys. The Bishojo. Okay. All right. They, well. they do have magical boy anime, though, Silver. How sad is that? Well, I'm all for equal opportunity. Yeah. I see no, I see no shame. Really I sad mean, feel. I don't either, but at the same time, it's like, oh god. No. I, Why? I don't, Help me. I don't know, Sapphire. I find you protest too much. Harum. But. Harum? If- Harumph, harumph. But anywho, anywho, getting back on track, <laughs> we are on the Friendship ne- Express. Never. <laughs> well, this is where we get the, the best Fluttershy freak out, because now that they've been driven into a corner, Fluttershy just summarizes their thoughts exactly. Before that, Rainbow Dash and Applejack puts more pressure on them, telling that, hey, we tell the whole town about this. Um, this is going to be a... This is going to put a lot of pressure on you, and I hope you don't screw up, because if you screw up, you're going to put the whole town down. I hope you don't screw up. And, well, they leave uh, Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy looking at each other very comically stressed. Look at that scene. I I just love that face. (laughs) Uh, So, Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy have something really important to say to Applejack and Rainbow Dash, and that is... There's no way we can get in the zone because the zone sounds like a horrible place since we are terrible at buckball and we are going to lose and let every pony down and we don't want to play anymore. And then they flee into the storage area. Yep. But before that, Snail says he's still okay to play. (laughs) Yeah, I'm still good, just so you're wondering. Yep. Uh, I mean... His obliviousness is what makes him so charming. <laughs> True that. Yeah, but that face that... You, I have to say, season six face expression has been really, really good. Meme-tastic, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, wondering why Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie are just so stressed out about this whole matter is because, well, they realize that they're not them. They don't work under pressure. So, they feel bad and try to look for them and apologize and telling them that they don't have to play. We'll play for them. And well, before that, one final practice. Where the, where we learn that even the most timid ponies are not above a little smack talk. Yeah. I actually don't like smack talk. I find it incredibly petty. Yeah, but still, if done right, it can be a really good motivator. Yep. But anywho, with that practice game happening, Applejack and Rainbow Dash give it their all against Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie, and also Snails as the keeper. Well, technically Snails, Snails is doing nothing because they can get a goal in. Yeah, Snails is kind of bored. Yep. And well, after that experience, after that practice, Rainbow Dash and Applejack says, Guys, you're awesome. You should really play. And we're sorry for the way we treated you. Because you're not us. You're you. you rather have fun than being competitive. So go out there and just have fun. Win, lose. As long as you're having fun, it's all okay on us. Well, I 
I'm glad for that. I Win, lose, have fun. That's a good message for anyone, I think. Mm-hmm. Then we get to the ending match where we finally get to see Brayburn's team yep. featuring, uh, what is it, Big Mac, uh, no, both Biceps' cousin. <laughs> and and one of the Hooffields, or was it the McColts, uh, the Blue family? McColts. Yes. And it's a eclectic team. I use eclectic instead of weird <laughs> because I like multisyllabic words. <laughs> but I just like, ah, where'd she get, when'd she leave the place? Probably because she, well, because of what Princess Twilight did, she decided to expand her horizons. Probably. One can only hope. Mm-hmm. But I do like the start of this match where Pinkie Pie just derps because Brayburn is all serious like and Pinkie Pie is just like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> Upside down. She's just enjoying herself. This is what I like about their attitude when it comes to games because, yes, you can play a serious match. Yes, you can be all serious-like. But if you're not having fun in the process, does it even matter? Well, some people might debate that, yes, if you're not playing seriously, you're not giving it your all. But if you're not having fun, does it even matter? At a film festival... I saw a documentary on, it was like a, a softball or some variation on softball or kickball, I forget which. The team was hyper aggressive. I mean, they really went after victory and they took it too far in my eyes because one guy literally spit on an opponent. He was so mad and worked up and their, their justification is I have, I have fun winning. Well, good for you. You've turned into something, you've turned into something terrible just because you have fun winning yep and that is something i don't like and honestly part of the reason i never got into sports is because the attitudes of the fans always seem so toxic uh, honestly um in terms of fan i i got no idea but um back to card games for a bit because that's the only thing i play that's uh, remotely social is that i have a uh, acquaintance i know and my philosophy when it comes to card games is I like to build fun decks. Mostly gimmick decks have one kind of gimmick like the final countdown or some kind of absurd way of winning. Probably Exodia is one of the examples. And in a proper tournament level game, those kind of decks will get destroyed. But in a fun social way, it's fun to experiment with crazy combos or just Things that you won't normally see. So, my friend told me that if you're building a fun deck and you're not winning, you're not having fun. If you build a fun deck, that means you're not serious. And to that, he does have a point. But at the same time, too, I couldn't agree. Because I'm having fun in my own way. Because this deck idea is interesting. If it doesn't work, well, fix it. The guy is saying that, but he's probably playing you... With a tournament deck. That is true. And so, right there, you're at cross-purposes. One could argue he, he's ruining the fun. That is also true, because I, I don't want to bring this to um, a card game petty, something like this, but it's a good example of how competition brings out the worst in people. We're in an election year, believe me. Uh, yeah. I know what it's like to see the worst in people. Oh, yep. Yeah, the too. ultimate. The ultimate competition for political power. Oh, yeah, but that has... How do you think I feel? This is my first year of voting, and this is what I have to choose. Yep, but besides that, we will put politics aside, because if it's not the sun or moon, we're not going to talk about it. Well, I don't know why we have to have a Pokemon discussion. I mean, really. I know. (gasps) Silver, go to the Uh, corner. What? Norman and I need to discuss Pokemans. (laughs) <laughs> oh, the 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 grown-ups are talking here. <laughs> oh well, but anywho, um, getting back on track with the buckball tournament, um, well, <laughs> it's Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. They win, obviously. Come on, um, but it doesn't mean that the other team, um, Brayburn team, is not doing a good job. They're doing a really good job. It's just that Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie are much better, and they win. Yay! But then, this is the part that irks me. I mean, this is a show aimed at kids. You'd want to give the kids an example of good sportsmanship. Applejack said that Brayburn was boasting about his his new team. 
and that's why she wanted to beat him. Mm -hmm. But they actually approach it with a great deal of dignity and, uh, you know, they're graceful. The the losing gene is graceful. Mm -hmm. And what happens, of course, Rainbow Dash says the worst possible thing. Yeah. Ha, good game. We bucked the hoof right off you. And you didn't even play. That's the thing that gets me. Rainbow was not an active player. And, and yet, yet she's talking smack. Uh, but still, um, here's the thing. Braeburn did accept that taunt with Grace because he said, Yep, you sure as shoot did. I'm going to have to get real serious about a strategy for our next rematch. Well, there, there you go. So Braeburn is actually the better sport, but I just, no one is holding Rainbow to task. And I find that disappointing. Yeah, that's still, it's in Rainbow Dash's character. So, I don't... Even uh, though it's in her character, I don't think it's appropriate. Oh, true that. But still, it's Rainbow Dash. If she's not a jerk at one point or another, well, it's Rainbow Dash. Come on. There, There is that. There, that is very true. I mean, 28 pranks later. The thing is, Rainbow's jerkishness serves a, a purpose. We're meant to learn the lesson with her. This is one of those cases where there's no lesson for her to learn. At least, that's not the lesson she learned. So, it feels like, ah, this is sort of uncomfortably hanging there. Yeah. Oh, well, it's Rainbow Dash. Like, I would, I really want to be by her side and try and support her, but I'm not one for smack talk because to me, if the person loses, hey, you give them word of encouragement and hope for the best because in all honesty, I would rather lose because I want to fight someone that's stronger than me. Uh, you sound like a you sound like a Dragon Ball fan. Oh yeah, because yeah. if you're always winning, you're gonna get lazy, and when you get lazy and win all the time, that sudden loss will come down crashing like a ton of bricks. Yes, indeed. Uh, oh, <laughs> what is it? Uh, age has weakened you, but victory has defeated you. <laughs> yes. True that. Uh, no, I am Gotham's reckoning. <laughs> oh, uh, well, but anywho, that's the episode. So, final thoughts. Um, Safi, what do you think about this one? I thought I saved my final thoughts within the first act, but okay, fine. I'll give you something. It's one of my favorite. Like, it feels like a mini gem to me, but at the same time, um, I do see the. It's like when I was uh, first watching this episode, I definitely noticed that, yeah, I could see the um, cliched plotline of Rainbow Dash and Applejack becoming total soccer moms come from a mile away. Other than that, I found this episode strangely enjoyable. Also, Pinkie Pie, like I said before, does have the best dance moves. Shake your groove thing, shake your groove thing, yeah, yeah. All right, you then. And Silver, what about you, bro? Well, it's a fun episode, don't get me wrong. I've had my op- my observations about sort of awkward context, like a game that's based solely on your 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 role in society. Know your role <laughs> and kick the ball. <laughs> All right. But it is fun. It is snails is probably the funniest element, but Fluttershy and Pinky's freakouts are the stuff of legend. It's just like for it's a mixture of strong and weaks for me. One thing we didn't talk about though is Pinkie Pie's main poofs. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm really not as smitten as others, but I swear these things could bring about world peace. Yep. Oh, didn't Finn say that he wants to snuggle up to them? Yes. Something it, like that, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Oh yes, he wants to huggle those main yep, poofs. Yep. And he and even uh DWK, who does the totally legit series. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know him. Even he got super serious and saying, This is the cutest thing ever. These main poofs are all that's right in the world. Yep. <laughs> so we you know you're doing something right when your main poofs could bring world peace. <laughs> yep. Has to go market that and sell it. <laughs> No, it'll ruin everything. Uh, but anywho, is that, are you done, Silver? Yep. Alrighty then. Well, as for me, uh, this episode is an interesting one because, like I mentioned, well, I think I talk a lot 
about my experience with competitions and whatnot. And I, when I first saw this episode, I clicked with it because I understand or I experienced what they've been through. And the whole point of view of being under pressure is not for everyone. And the way that they told it here was really interesting. And the soccer mom story from Safi, yeah, I can see that too because Applejack and Rainbow Dash here wants to win. They want to win really, really bad. But not at the cost of their friend's happiness. And I do appreciate that them realizing this and changing their tune. I do enjoy this review at the same time too because we get to talk a lot about the aspect of competition. So that's a good debate too. I really like that. There's the end for this review. So Silver, any idea what we're going to do next week? Well, let's see here. We are giving the comics a little breathing room because they are, you know, they can only come out once a month and we've got a lot to do. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned before, we're going to continue on them after issue 35 comes out of the main line and issue 45 comes out of the Friends Forever series. So, well, that'll give us some breathing time to, well, let the comics catch up. And so we shall continue with our episode train as we go to the fault in our cutie marks. <laughs> yes, we will, we shall finally talk about the griffin that won a nation, that won the hearts and the minds of the Brody fandom. Yes, yes, yes. That, oh, manga gone? No. <laughs> that made my life harder because everybody now is saying, oh, Twilight said you can't have a cutie mark. And I'm like, Twilight's not the boss of me. Silver, well, you're a hippogriff. You have a pony butt. Yeah, Twilight haven't met you yet. Well, if you go by my reviews, I've tormented her on several occasions. Oh, true, but... Dad. In your universe, you have. Yeah, she'd <clears throat> love manga, though. <laughs> she'd love manga. The real Twilight in the show would probably be like, Oh my god, a half-breed! I propose dissection for science! <laughs> for science! Uh, but anywho, we're going to have a lot of fun talking about Gabby. <laughs> Gabby, Gabby, Gabby. I know. Gabby Gumps? Nah, what was her official name? Her long name, was it? Gabriella. Wow. Gabriella. Again with the G's. <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's a G-rated society. <laughs> <laughs> ah, anyway, that's for next week's discussion. Um, I hope you guys look forward to it because I know I am. I, I am very excited for this one. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. But being coach, I'm Silver Quill, and I'm ready to play today. I'm Sapphire Heart Song, and I just think I'm going to go away. And we'll guys catch you for another amazing Sportville Adventure Review. Sports! Help me. See ya. <laughs> Balls. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you balls. never answered my question, Silver. Is your name Beavis or Butthead? Um, or is better, Conholio? I am all that he is. I am what the fandom needs me to be. If they need a Beavis, very well. If they need a Butthead, uh, I fall into that rather naturally. Mm-hmm.